Hello, people. Welcome to the show. Today, we have some very interesting news about Vinny Bashiano, a.k.a. Vinny Gorgeous. It's uh, some very interesting information. And uh, James calls me this morning and he says, Lee, I got this story about Vinny. What do you think? And he tells me, and I found it very fascinating. So I'm going to give all the credit to my partner here uh, for uh, being on high alert. James, how you doing today? Hey, doing well. The only question I have is why am I on the wrong side of the screen? No, you're taking over. That's what it is. That's my seat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get what you're doing here. Pretty soon, <laughs> Lee Cole will be dead. And no. James Proctor will be on the other side all by himself. <laughs> or he'll have a new partner. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just so people know, we're going to be talking about uh, Vinny Bashiano, and he's going to why don't you tell us exactly what's going on? So there is a chance that six years ago, Vinny Bashiano put in a request to have a case uh, heard. Uh, mm -hmm. The judge, he wanted the judge to rehear the case because of the fact that he said that Joe Messina pretty much was the boss and asked him a question about uh, this guy, Randy Bozzolo, that was murdered. And... Yeah. Uh, and so explain what happened on that tape, first of all. Yeah, so so basically what happened was is that Messino asked him about the, the killing of Pozzolo. And if you remember, Messino at that point had gotten convicted and um, he, was, he had been facing the death penalty. And after he got um, convicted, he went to the uh, government and said, hey, I can give you information. And pretty much the only information that the government was interested in at this point was was things related to Vinnie Gorgeous. And so what what this is about is is regarding the killing, like you said, of Pozzolo. And and so Messino had wired up and and asked him several times about about did you did you kill him and everything. And so Bassiano uh, went ahead and and I guess what would you say? basically confess to it or or answered Messino, but uh, part of the issue is too is you know he's the boss, Messino's the boss, and he's asking someone uh, subservient to him a question, and and you know in the in that life you have to answer the boss, and so they're basically saying this is a, a violation of his. So the government doing the wire, and him Bassiano can, having to. Uh, answer Messino, that was a violation of his constitutional rights against self-incrimination. And here we are six years later, and I'm going to tell you people, this is this is the power of YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, six years later, now the judge wants to hear this. He kind of sat on it, but now he, you know, all of a sudden, and this is something like uh, with uh, uh, with um, Stephen Crea too, mm -hmm. um, with Panisi and uh, Pasqua, and how that case came out, how the judge, the judge uh, heard it, rejected it, but it got put, pushed up to a higher court. So now the judge is going to hear this. Uh, let, let, and let's put this up. Okay. Explain what this is right here. Okay. So I, I got this out of Pacer. And so uh, this is the um, minutes of, of a couple of cases or a couple of, of conferences that have taken place. Uh, between Vinny Bassiano's team and Judge Nicholas Garofalo. So uh, initially it was on on 5-2 of 2023. And so the defendant, Bassiano, had a motion for uh, a new trial. And this was back in 2011. For, and so that was denied. And then he was sentenced um, to life in prison. And then back in... Um, uh, 2017, you know, he made this request to be able to, um, you know, warrant a retrial based on, you know, this evidence that he has that, you know, self-incrimination and and entrapment. And so anyway, the uh, court, uh, it's just saying finally the the judge Garofalo said that he would, um, was willing to uh, take you know, look at it. And so basically on 5-2-2023, uh, this was the first meeting. And, and what was said was that they wanted the, the courts to provide counsel for Bassiano. And then the second thing was the court needed to unseal any and all proceedings related to Bassiano's representation. 
because a lot of this too is besides what the government's saying, or what he's saying about the government and the entrapment. Part of it too is he feels that the Bassiano feels that his legal counsel during the trial back in um, back in the early 2000s was bad, and so uh, so that's what the 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 providing counsel is about. And so the third thing was an extension of time to file the government's response, and so. This was 5223, and then finally on 614, which was just a couple of weeks ago, Judge Garopoulos had the uh, had a Zoom call that actually Benny Gorgeous was uh, part of, and so uh, basically what we saw out of this was that um, you had uh, Anthony DiPietro, the attorney, he's going to continue to represent uh, Benny Gorgeous in these proceedings. And, and, there's, and James, there's steps here. When you get trying to get a case overturned and just, just like the CREA trial, I mean, the, the, the CREA case, yeah, you got to go to the judge first and the judge has to decide whether he wants to give you a new trial. And yeah, then exactly. if, if, if the judge says yes or no, at that point, you decide whether you want to take it to the higher court and then the higher court has to accept it. So now this is going to be up to the judge whether he, he gets a new trial. Is that how it works? Yeah, that's how it works. And and understand that this is a big deal. And just like the, the Korea situation where it's, it's kind of a similar situation, uh, but a little different. So in this case, Bassiano, it is a big deal because normally these things do not get uh, heard again. And so Judge Groffles was holding on to this for for six years after in 2011. So in 2011, he denied uh, the ability to have a retrial. And then uh, more evidence comes in. Uh, and then Bastian makes a request in 2017. And it is uh, re it is basically held on for six years. And so, you know, this is uh, a big win for, for Bastiano. So the thing that what we're seeing there is that uh, so what happened at the conference on 614 was, one, the re government's requesting a court issue uh, for an unsealing order. So, you know, there's a lot of this lot of this information that involved uh, Messino that was sealed because he was an informant. And so and and for, and for people that don't know, Joe Messino was the head of the Bonanno family. And he, most people here know that he was a very powerful boss. He was the first boss to really flip. And uh, he brought he was down still the boss when he was uh, on wire. And that's part of it, too. He was at that time when he was on wire, he was the boss at that point. That's kind he, of where the entrapment comes. And, he, and, and Messino basically is the one that uh, told Bashiano to kill this guy. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so and he's asking him if it was done. Mm -hmm. uh, did you do it? And in the beginning of the wire, uh, Bashiano avoided giving him the answer he, he felt a little nervous about it but then well, Messino yeah. pushed pushed it pushed it. Uh, it it's kind of a form do you think this is kind of a a, a form of entrapment do, you know this is what the you know the feds are willing to do to to bring these guys down yeah yeah they're willing to do anything i mean we we talked about just uh the relationship between fbi agents and um confidential informants uh like uh you know, Greg Scarpa and the abuse that was taking place there. And so this is an example of it. And then the thing on Pizzolo, one of the things to remember on that, the reason, you know, part of it too was it was, uh, the hit was unsanctioned. And so part of it too was a, you know, Bassiano was protecting some of the people involved in it as well. And, and I know he didn't answer the question initially, then finally he answered it. And so Anyway, what's what's happened here is that uh, there's a lot of sealed transcripts that need to be released or unsealed. You know, I don't know what's going to happen with the public. You know, some of that may when when they talk about unsealed, is it going to be unsealed just for the eyes of the of the prosecution and the defense? Or will it be saying that we as um, the public can get through freedom of information? So that's going to be interesting. And then. Um, so there's a lot of, of transcript excerpts that need to be unsealed. Um, so that's what's going to happen now. 
uh, the government, uh, I think the other thing is, is that all these excerpts, all of the unsealing of documents have to get uh, to Judge uh, Garofalo uh, with the court and on September 11th of this year. So basically they have, what is it, today's uh, July 6th, so uh, about two months. And remember, yeah, this months. was back on 614. And so, you know, this is going, going on for a little over two weeks. So, so you, you see a, a three months to get everything unsealed because there's a lot of documentation there they got to go to. So the next steps after the unsealing is complete, uh, the trial attorneys uh, are going to create affidavits. They're going to provide the court with a joint submission proposing a schedule for the expeditious expedited resolution of this petition by no later than September 22nd of 2023. So we should know by September 22nd, 2023, will there be a new trial? Will there be parts of this dismissed? Um, you know, what's going to happen? You know, there's a lot of things that can happen. It can either be a retrial. It could be uh, the judge could summarily just dismiss parts of this. They could say, hey, this thing is unconstitutional. You know, they're looking at the, you know, two of the, I think the fourth and the fifth amendment that possible violations on his civil rights. And so, you know, we'll we'll know more um, in September uh, what's happening, but this is a very um, big step and a big win for Bassiano because you you normally don't see that. But you know what you're seeing though lately is that you're having more cases of the government, you know, like Judge Garofalos and Judge Brooks and others that are willing to at least look at the relook at the evidence and and at least consider uh new trials and, and you know james when these guys were sentenced uh, korea let's say you know stephen korea and 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 when, and when this guy was sentenced uh vinnie basciano the internet wasn't a big thing uh youtube was barely in existence if it was even in existence at least on here with these shows mm -hmm. how much do you think that everything being out in the open like this, guys like uh, Dominic Chicali, they have their own shows, and uh, uh, and just so people know, we talked to Dominic Chicali about this and asked him for a quote, and his quote was that he he's done a lot of time, and uh, he only wishes him the best. But we also noticed, noticed too, just so people know, tomorrow at noon, Dominic Chicali will be talking. Uh, uh, he's going to discuss this. And the reality is Dominic Ciccoli is one of the per people that gave evidence against uh, Vinnie Basciano. So he figured that he had to reply to it. And so he, he's going to. So tomorrow at noon, he will be talking about this. Uh, and that part, we'll just leave up to Dominic from here. And we said we have what we have to say. But the case, when it gets to uh, when it gets to the judge, very rarely will a judge overturn a, a, a case that they sat on originally because it kind of says that they did something wrong. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, part of it too was at the time he had, he had uh, George Goltzer and Richard Casper as trial lawyers, as, as his lawyers. And so part of it is, you know, Anthony DiPietro was not his attorney until the 27, until 2017 when he, you know, filed this brief against the original counsel of Vinnie Bassiano. And so what they're saying is, is that um, the big part of this is that as we back in January of 2005, Messino twice used his powers, Bassiano's mafia boss, to co coerce him to admit to Zolo's murder in those tape talks and that's what became like the centerpiece of the government's evidence at the trial and so what what uh counsel was saying pietro was saying that those tapes should not have been allowed and if you look at the the filings which we have from di pietro he said that uh that vinnie gorgeous could have been killed if he didn't answer messino's questions but thanks to the failure of Goltzer and Casper to get those words suppressed, Bassiano was uh, convicted. 
And so then, they're taking. They're saying you take the centerpiece. The centerpiece in this was uh, was um, Messino. He was he's the one that accelerated the case on this. So they're saying if you take out that part, it makes the case a lot weaker. And mm -hmm. if it goes before, uh, say it's retried, uh, yeah, that part of the case is going to be thrown out. They won't hear that part. They'll yeah, hear and that's, other that's parts. Part. Hear some other parts, and that's even if. The, if the uh, uh, prosecution even decides to um, retry the case. Yeah. And can you hear something that's even uh, more powerful, in my opinion? So when Bassiano was sentenced, and this is according to Di Pietro, and he wrote this, they said the recordings were the linchpin of the government's case against Bassiano. And Bassiano stated that the attorneys, the prosecutors, and two of the court clerks met with the jury after the penalty phase verdict. And the jury told everybody in that room that they completely disregarded every single cooperating witness, except for one who didn't link Bassiano to the murder. And so the jury said that. And so, you know, this is a 132 page filing that Di Pietro put back in 2017 and now it's being looked at but that's pretty uh powerful in my opinion that the jury had disregarded every single cooperating witness and you know there were a few dominic there was but the the big thing was that they got went off of the recordings that the government provided with Okay, so you're yeah. saying that the jury actually said that the biggest part of the case was Messino. That's the only that's the part that they really listened to. That was the only part that they regard. They disregarded every single cooperating uh, witness except for one, but the one that did not link Bassiano to the murder. And that's the catalyst that they want. They want. They basically want to take the catalyst out, and that right. would be Messino. Right, and. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to take. It's hard. It's hard to beat your voice on tape. I mean, it happened with John Gotti. Once you put your voice on tape, it's hard to say no. You had nothing to do with it. I mean, it, it's solid. It, it's there. It's evidence. Right. Exactly. And then you know, one of the things that uh, was said was, uh, if you violate Joe Messino's rules by showing him disrespect, Joe Messino could have me killed. And he said, correct. And so. You know, he was able to um, bring up or at least to identify that, hey, you know, Messino was the boss and that in that mafia culture that, yeah, the boss can have you killed and you're supposed to answer what the boss says. And so, you know, there's, um, you know, it's interesting to me. You know, I think it's um, interesting because, you know, I don't know what will happen. I mean, normally you know, a, a, a complete um, reversal of a turn doesn't happen that often, but it doesn't happen that often that the judge will even um, consider this, especially after six years. Yeah, and, and that's all you can hope for because you got, there's a procedure that you have to go through. And without that procedure with the judge, you can't even go to the court, the higher court trying to overturn the judge's opinion on, the, on, on hearing it. Is, is that right. correct? Yeah, that's that's definitely correct. And so what do you see happening here? Give us your honest opinion, James. That's a good question. You know, you know, obviously we we will have the in September, you know, Judge Groffless will consider it. That's a good question. I mean, personally I believe that um this is hard because I, oh, you know, I know Kenny Gorgeous, in my opinion, he he definitely killed people. He did he did a lot of of the things that he was accused of. But also, but there's a process how, but, of yeah. law. Yeah, but it's a process of law, and he shouldn't be convicted. He should be convicted no. for what for what he's convicted for, not not for what he did. Uh, yeah, if, if, I think if, part of it. I think there might be a retrial. I, I think that there could. Uh, there could be a, a retrial, uh, and then the hope would be that, you know, what basically what you want is to suppress the the recordings. If that can happen, if the judge Garofalos could say, hey, 
suppress the recordings, then that would allow a um, him to talk about Bastien have a better chance of at least getting some sort of reduction in in the sentence. And you know, if that happens, there's a retrial. You know, the truth is that some of the people that testified before might have to be involved again in testifying. And we we haven't we know one thing we know about the feds, they will put cases together that are very questionable at times. Yes. Uh, currently, if you support Donald Trump, a lot of people do not like and they believe that they're railroading him and he's an actual uh, he's actually running for president and it's happening right now. Right. And uh, so people that don't think the feds have, you know, when I came into this, James, and this is two years ago, I knew nothing about uh, and I never even considered anything about these guys that were getting convicted and some of them uh, sometimes very shady things were being done to convict them. Right. And then people will use excuses like, oh, but they're gangsters, they're killers. That's fine. Get them on what you can get them on. If you can't prove that they killed somebody when you want to call them a killer, that's one thing. Right. You know, and uh, that's why you got to bring into question a lot of these uh, informants. Uh, that testify. Don't get me wrong. There's some really good informants that testify. But, you know, if you look at Sammy Gravano, he testified. But look at what he does now, James. He he he, he increases his stories and stuff, even though the guy's had an extraordinary life as a gangster. Uh, he uh, doesn't always uh, match his stories from 20 years ago. Right. So people do lie. Yeah, uh, they do. And. And that, that is a, a people lie. And then, you know, in this case, we know that the jury didn't believe the other, um, you know, informants. And so, you know, it'll be interesting, you know, to me what what happens. But, you know, this is it's like it's like say they overturn the trial. I mean, this is the strange and maybe Dominic will uh, uh We'll talk Maybe about not seeing, Yeah, Dominic might talk about he it. He might talk yeah. about this. Do people that have originally testified, do they have to go to another trial if it happens? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I'm guessing they do. Uh, I, guess, I guess they do also. And so... You, you can't know, a subpoena or whatever. You can't, you know, if you're subpoenaed to court, you're subpoenaed, right? Yeah, you're, you're subpoenaed. And you know what's interesting to me on this is, you know, we... we when we look at the Korea case, for example, um, you have uh, some of that evidence that's supporting this, you know, possible retrial is, is based on John Panisi and him um, saying stuff contradictory in YouTube. And so the thing is, that I think is or what I see is that that when you're an informant or a cooperating witness and you're doing a YouTube channel, you have to be very careful what you're saying because, um, you know, you can always go, especially on like murder and someone has been put away for a long, you, you know, if they say something that's different after the trial, that could be used as a, a way to get a new trial. And, and, and it was, you know, successful with the Stephen Crea. Case. Uh, look at Panisi. You got him out here. He talks about active criminals. Yeah, exactly. Active bosses of families and names them. Yeah, and, and that, I think the that's biggest the, knock that's on like not... a guy like Panisi. Right. Uh, well, not, not, I'm sorry. There's many knocks on a guy like Panisi, but the fact right. that he actually talks about mo modern. We talk to people. Uh, I'll give you an example. Dominic Chicali will tell us that he doesn't want to talk about anything uh, current. Yeah. You know. And, uh, you know, see, and this is what we do, people. People question us because we decided to take our show in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. But, and, we, but we're, yeah. not gonna, we're not going to walk away from stories because of uh, uh, it might upset. The first thing that we did, that I did here, I called Dominic. I said, Dominic, we're going to do uh, a story on, uh, and just out of respect to you, because Dominic, uh, is uh, this um, vodka company? Just so people know, EG Vodka, and uh, Dominic helped 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 us get this. And EG Vodka is going to be a sponsor of this show, right? 
And uh, we couldn't have gotten that without Dominic Chicali. So right. I'm just going to say that straight up. But we are going to say what we have to say here, and we're never going to come off of that. People no. that bitch and complain about our show, what they do is they attack other shows, but they don't talk about the informants anymore. Yeah, right. Exactly. We, we, we do shows here. Our last show, we did a show on Panisi this week. Uh, we did a show, our last show was on, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, Greg Sparkle. Yeah. So, so we talked about informants, and we continually do it. We just decided to take this show in a different direction. So the people that are complaining about the direction we're taking this show, what I like to say to you, uh, well, if instead of talking about us, do some shows on an informant, okay? Well, because you know what? We'll do what you guys ain't doing. We'll still do shows on informants. That's all I have well, to say to you guys. Well, and the thing I'd like to add to this is that one of the things that that's important is from a journalistic standpoint, and that's that's what I want to do professionally. You know, be journalistic, be um, objective. You know, we're going to put our opinions, of course, but you know, stories like this will be objective. And part of that is is that when a story like this breaks, you want to be able to talk to people that might have information related to this or that was involved in. Dominic Chicali was. Uh, involved in in the cases with uh, Vinny Bastiano, and we're able to get a statement from him. And, you know, and not only that, we got a statement, and he says, "Lee, do the, you guys talk what you got to talk about?" Yeah. He didn't say, you know, if people remember when I first came on here, uh, Jimmy Calandra was my friend, and the next day he no longer was my friend because I did a video on uh, on Alan Kaiser. Right. But we want to, when we talked to Dominic about it, he didn't say, oh, don't touch that story, Lee, or, or he didn't say anything like that. And, uh, and you know, one thing I, I also want to point out is that Dominic has never uh, told us what we can talk about. Nobody we tells us about. what we can talk no about. One. No. Nobody. And, uh, you know, and out of respect, if you, find, if you, if you, if you feel, have become friendly with somebody, you get asked, you call them, you talk to them and say, tell yeah. them what you're doing and move on. And, yeah, uh, exactly. and I made a couple of mistakes over two years, not doing that, but that's something that I will do from now on. If I have anything to say, we're going to revert to something. We're going to, we're going to talk about it to the person that sure. we're, we're talking about. Sure. Okay. Uh, we just want to do the right thing, you know? Now we did a we did a story on a lottery lawyer, a guy that stole some lottery lottery money. Explain yeah. what he just got sentenced to, didn't he? Yeah. So uh, this was uh, Jason Curland, and so he ended up. Um, so basically, what had happened was that you had a Genovese guy, Christopher Tricho, and uh, was involved in it, but there's a lottery lawyer, Jay Curlin, that ended up ripping off like over a hundred million dollars from lottery uh, winners. And so they sentenced him um, to 13 years in prison. And so, uh, you know, he got a, a bigger sentence than, than uh, Chiricchio, who is he, he got a bigger years. sentence than the gangster that kept the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, well, they were both keeping the money. They they both should have went to prison. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, and there were three. There were three. If you remember, there were three um, clients who got fleeced. So there was one at one one and a half billion dollars, another two forty five, and another one hundred fifty million dollars. So you know, basically, you're you're looking at nearly two billion dollars in lottery uh, winners, and and so at least one hundred fifty million. It, you know, gotten um, uh, fleece from these guys. And this happened between 2018 and, and 2020. But this lawyer was the one that really was working with the clients uh, that, to get the money. And so that's why he, he got the 13 uh, million, 13, 13 years in prison, because he was the one that's actually talking to these um, people that won the lottery. You know, it wasn't the wise guys, wasn't the Genovese guys going up and and, and talking to him, it's this lawyer that was with the Genovese that was able to, you know, basically sweet talk his way into getting. Um, what cre and this is a, this, this is a creepy. This is a creepy guy. Yeah. Here he is. He goes to these people uh, that win big money, millions and millions of dollars, 
and yeah. he fleeces it along with uh, uh, who? What was the number of the guy? Uh, what was the name of the um, Genovese soldier again? Yeah, Christopher. Uh, I think he's Chris the plumber, and is Christopher. Oh, Chiricchio. yeah. We and we did a video on him. Yeah, Christopher uh, Chiricchio and Chris the plumber, and he's a Long Island or Staten Island uh, wise guy for the Genovese and big money guy, big money guy, but. Um, it's so good to see this guy go where he belongs because he betrayed people that were lucky enough to win the uh, lottery and and literally rob money from them. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So three three different cases and uh, where th they took advantage of lottery winners between 2018 and and 2020. And that's the amazing thing, people. We weren't planning on uh, uh, talk. We were waiting for tomorrow to do a story, but. We got all the information we needed on this. We've been working on the, the story with Vinny Gorgeous. So it kind of works out. That's what's going on, people. Tell us underneath here of the video what you think about it. Uh, and please remember, uh, as we have it run underneath, subscribe to our channel. If you're not, hit the, hit the link. Hit the like. I'm sorry. Hit the like, not the link. Mm -hmm. And the reminder bell. Uh, James, what else would you like to say closing this out? No, we're, we're still working on the website and eventually what we're going to be working on too is, you know, you can do these uh, cards on YouTube. And so it'll, what you'll, you'll see eventually, you know, hopefully in the next couple of shows, you, you can basically at the end of the show, um, you can just click on the link on the, on YouTube and it will open up a tab and take, take you directly to our website because we're still giving away. We got some, some more gifts to give out you know we we got kind of did our first set of those now we have more to give out so we'll, we're still opening up for people that want to uh be part it's free they can register be part of our um and, let me, let, and i'm gonna put that let me put yeah. that up one second i'm gonna show people exactly what to do here yeah people this is real this is our website uh the main website's almost completed and uh we're having the uh some old we're altering uh, some mobile site stuff. We're having, yeah, yeah, uh, mobile optimized. Yes, and, and that's going to be done this week also. But I want to show you, if you go on this site right here, and if you go to fill this form out, once the email, uh, we will contact you with information on receiving free gifts from us. Basically, we want you to come on, sign this, and tell us that you've been on our site, and we'll send you a free gift. Uh, we've sent out 50 or 60 of them already. Yeah. And... Uh, People are, uh, once you notify us, we'll get back with you and ask you for your address and we'll send them to you. You're going to be put on our email list and uh, that's what we're doing right now. So yeah, yeah, that's right the there, main thing. Uh, yeah. Free, yeah. yeah, and it's realmobcontent.com uh, and we have uh, two sites, but this is going to be our main site. It's going to be linked up, uh, linked up with our Patreon page and we're still going to do our regular stuff on YouTube. Um, yeah. But so people, if you watch this, go there, fill that out, say hi to us when you fill this out right here in this little note thing message, say, hi guys, I looked at your site. The minute you say that, I'm going to email you back and I'm going to say, what's your address? And we're going to send you the gift. Is that right, James? Yeah, that's right. And there's no cost to do that. Um, uh, it's, we'll pay um, for the mailing. yeah, we pay for the, even the stamps and all that to get you the gift. So we take care of it all for you. Yes. Okay. So people hope you like this. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's uh, wish uh, Vinny Basciano, AKA yeah. Vinny Gorgeous the best. Yes. And uh, you know what? He's done 20 years. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, you know, let's hope he gets out. Yeah. Okay. Take care people. Have a nice Thanks one. Thanks a lot.